So this video will discuss requirements churn, the hidden drain on systems engineering. It's been inspired by numerous discussions that we've been having in the MBSC group on LinkedIn, and the URL is provided for your convenience. This group has thousands of members, and uh, there's been a lot of lively discussion lately, sparked in part by uh, the videos I'm posting to this channel. So thanks to everyone who's participating and sharing their thoughts. They are appreciated. So requirements are an attempt to express something about the system of interest in textual form. And there's been years of development in best practices, standards, processes going on far longer than I've been alive, and we still get very bad requirements. A lot of requirements are still unclear. They're ambiguous. There's the overly prescriptive requirement where they're trying to design the system with the requirements. You know, the classic I like to point to is requirements requiring a, a fan in the engine compartment rather than requiring a maximum temperature or some other more useful property-based requirement instead of being so dictatorial uh, with design solutions which add weight complexity and reduce feasibility. And they're otherwise deficient. And, and frankly, requirements depend heavily upon the interpretations of the downstream activities and personnel and there's a loss of fidelity uh, with every transition, so keep that in mind. Unfortunately, requirements are the sacred cow uh, in systems engineering. Uh, they still sap resources from other higher-valued MBSE efforts, and everyone accepts them unquestioningly. Uh, and frankly, there's a lot of churn that happens to try to keep pace with rapidly evolving system models. They're leeching manpower away from better modeling and better techniques. You know, no one wants to pay extra for better systems engineering, so the resources have to come from somewhere. I'd like to see them pried loose from this requirements churn and reinvested in higher value activities. So remember, our ultimate goal is to help engineers understand what they're being asked to design and ensure consistency within that set of instructions so we can maximize the odds of pro program and project success. I mean, everybody accepts this. There's no argument or debate that we should try to describe a building with text-based requirements saying a 2x4 should be placed at these coordinates and, and that sort of thing. Nobody has any problem with this, and nobody has any problem with this. You know, wiring diagrams are okay when we're trying to describe a circuit. Nobody has any issues whatsoever and wouldn't dream of trying to do this with text. So why is it so hard to understand that text isn't the way to describe complicated and complex systems? You know, why do we accept text-based descriptions as the gold standard for this? You know, I believe very strongly that, again, everyone points to contractual issues. Oh, we have to have shall statements to put it on contract. No, you don't. You know, we could put contractual stereotypes on elements. You know, we could compile the critical properties and elements into tables and matrices. There's lots of ways that we can present this information or extract it from the model in derived work products, which could be a document but that the authoritative way to describe things does not have to be a shall statement. You know, there's lots of ways to capture this and ensure visibility. I realize we don't want to drop a 200,000 element model on somebody downstream without giving them some roadmap to understand it, but there are ways to call attention to what's really important. You know, I believe very strongly the text-based requirement is the bastion of document-centric thinking that's holding MBSE back from more rapid evolution. It is the biggest barrier I see in the way of moving this discipline forward. So let's go for an example here to show you why requirements churn is bad. And it's simplistic, and I'll tell you up front, my art skills aren't the best, but I think you'll get the point. So here we have a customer need, I want a triangle. And this could be anything else that you so choose, a capability, whatever it may be. But So here's, here's the triangle that the customer has in mind. So we start refining it, and we start writing our shell statement. So the system shall be a triangle, and oh, it should be a right triangle. And so we've, we've done some refinement and improved our understanding. Well, now it's changed shape and size, and so now we've added more requirements. Side A shall be this length and that length and the other. You know, we have more refinement. And imagine this keeps going on as the engineering and architecting team work together to refine what the customer meant by triangle and find all the ways to describe it. And at the end of the day, we end up with this. You know, all we really need is an equilateral triangle of length six, made out of 10, 15 steel, whatever else. You know, so there's been a lot of refinement, a lot of changes. Look at the effort that would have gone into trying to keep all those shell statements in sync with this engineering. And you can pretend this was an FEA model, uh, you know, a simulation, whatever it may be. But the point is, the system model is evolving as we gain more understanding and more refinement and more detail and bringing along reams of shell statements 
for the ride is a waste of time. Think how many people were you in your last requirements change control meeting and just add up all the hours and the hourly rates you're paying for all these people to be there, approve them, um, you know, just the, the, the effort to prepare. This requirements churn is sapping so much energy from the engineering effort and there's so little payoff. That's why I advocate so strongly that you know we shouldn't try to keep all these in sync forever. That you know we should uncouple it. And again, think it's even worse for set-based design or architecting where you're exploring multiple alternatives explicitly as you go. So I really strongly encourage you to uncouple your text requirements from the system model and effort and only synchronize them at deliberately chosen intervals. They don't have to be kept in sync every step of the way. You know, I strongly believe that a high quality, consistent, competently executed, and I keep saying competently executed because there is a lot of bad MBSC out there, but if you have people that know what they're doing, your competently executed system model is a far better investment of your time and resources than requirements churn. You know, here's a, a, a image I've stolen from the No Magic website. You know, this is the way I see the world sort of fitting together. It's a good expression. You know, your system model in the center there is your hub that connects all these other things together, your requirements and your PLM and your FMEAs and your FEAs. Uh, you know, all the things that have to go around to help refine and understand this, you can coordinate and orchestrate with a competently executed system model. That's what it's there for. It's the hub that lets you pass data around and share knowledge and information without having to go through all the hassle of trying to connect every tool. Again, we want a federation uh, of models, not a tight integration. So with that, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate uh, your viewership, and uh, please keep sharing the comments and feedback both through YouTube and through LinkedIn. Have a great day.